Now let's move to this part. So I would like to present our keynote speaker of today. And, this, and the keynote speaker of today is Samir Badu. Uh, Samir is the representative of uh, uh, Metaverse, Metaverse Mentors. And he, his topic of today will be how education will be in Metaverse. Uh, it is really a very interesting topic to hear and to hear it uh, to hear more about it because metaverse is a buzzword in our day's world and it is really interesting to hear how education uh, can be complied with this term. So hello Samir, can you hear us and can you see us? Yes, good morning. Thank you. I uh, hear you perfectly fine. Am I audible as well? Uh, we cannot hear. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, you hear me as well? Am I audible? Good, good morning. Am I audible? Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Okay, great, great. Yeah, super excited to, to be here. So uh, when you guys are ready, uh, I'm ready. And then uh, I will share my slides as well, because we cannot talk about the metaverse without any visuals, of course. But uh, yeah, let me know if you guys are ready, we can start. Yeah, we are ready and we are waiting for your presentation. Okay, sure. Let me share my screen first. So can you guys see my slides? Yes, perfectly. We can oh, see. Awesome. Well, again, um, thank you everyone. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Really uh, excited. Normally I'm using, I'm doing these talks uh, during a weekday uh, at night. So uh, doing it at a Saturday morning is uh, also kind of new for me. Uh, really uh, interesting. Um, before we start, and I will give a bit of uh, introduction about myself, um, I want to start with something I find really important, which is uh, the following. I think uh, nowadays, the last days, a couple of uh, really strange things uh, have happened in uh, East Europe, and I would like to uh, yeah, express my sadness and my thoughts to uh, the people in uh, Ukraine. I think it's uh, deeply tragic what's going on there, and uh, people having super hard time and uh, yeah i wish them all the strength that uh, they can use and yeah that also puts things into perspective what we guys uh, are doing uh, here today but ultimately uh, everything continues as well so uh, still very excited but yeah wishing those people uh, all the strength uh, that they can use having uh, said that just a bit of introduction about my background who i am and what i'm going to tell you guys uh, today so my name is Sami Badawi. I'm based in Amsterdam. I'm 26 years old. I have a background actually in information management. So I also had some data science courses uh, that I thoroughly uh, followed when I was in uh, education, like uh, programming in Python, in R, and yeah, I've got quite some experience with it. So it's really interesting to be on the other uh, end of the table, so to say. Um, yeah, what I'm currently doing, I have, uh, I'm the founder of Metaverse Mentors. This is an education uh, platform where we in real time speak with entrepreneurs, developers, uh, academics, professors uh, who are operating in the Metaverse uh, space. Parallel to that, I'm working at a company, Cisco, where uh, I'm responsible for the universities of applied sciences in the Netherlands, helping them uh, yeah, with digitalization projects. So we are an infrastructure company. So essentially everything uh, yeah, that we are doing here, we, we, yeah, we provide the infrastructures from that uh, perspective. So yeah, that's a bit about myself. And um, yeah, what I'm going to do is uh, take you to the world of metaverse and education. That's the title of my talk uh, today. 
These are two things that will dramatically change our lives in the foreseeable future, uh, I think. And if we're looking at the moment, what we are seeing is that there is a lot of discussion about the future. Of course, we saw this this week with uh, Russia, what will be the implications of what's happening now for the future, but also with COVID, is it a virus or is it just a fever? We see it with blockchain as well. Should everything be decentralized or is centralization also kind of nice? NFTs that are reaching prices of uh, millions of uh, dollars, are they just a huge scam or are they legitimate uh, technical solutions? And then um, the metaverse, there's of course, it was already said, perhaps uh, yeah, it's a buzzword, is it? Uh, the biggest technological innovation that we have ever seen since the rise of the mobile internet or even the internet itself? Or is it the biggest hype we've ever seen in the history of uh, technology? Well, we will find out in this uh, speech. So therefore, I would like to talk about three things today. First, what the metaverse is, then about metaverse and education, and then why for you guys as data scientists or perhaps future data scientists, this is relevant uh, for you guys to know. Well, the, I will try to give you a fraction of what the metaverse is because it's actually very difficult uh, to explain and it's even better demonstrated and experienced than uh, explained. But unfortunately, developers keep building uh, new stuff, which I then have to discover and explain all over uh, again. But for a moment, forget everything you know about uh, Metaverse, Web3, Blockchain. Let's just start with uh, the basics. And to start with the basics, we have to go back to 1992, where there was a science fiction novel written from a guy called uh, Neil Stephenson in 1992. And he spoke about this virtual world which would be the successor of the internet where people would spend a lot of time not on the internet but in the internet spending large proportions of their time in those virtual worlds well then in 2000s we had a game called we had yeah like some kind of interactive virtual environment called second life and millions of users took part in this virtual world and it had thousands of excitable headlines and it was about to be yeah the next virtual world but then ultimately it had died a slow and quiet death at least that is uh what it seemed but then fast forward to 2016 which was my kind of acquaintance with what we are all going to talk about in this presentation um i was doing uh, what i was saying this uh, master degree in information management and we had some blockchain courses there and yeah what we did actually there was something really interesting because we tried to program smart contracts where we could ensure the provenance of particular diamonds showing that diamonds do not come from any shady uh yeah shady practices because what you see in sierra leone the people the, the process how it's developed it can come from quite some shady pr practices but Ironically enough, the term NFTs didn't exist uh, at that moment, but yeah, we were programming that, so that was really interesting. And then in 2019, I read about the metaverse for the first time in The Economist, and my reaction was exactly the same as everyone else that I speak now about the metaverse. Uh, it's just a buzzword, it's probably just a high, just another technological ev evolution. And people will probably just get addicted and it's just uh, for nerds. But then um, in 2020, a couple of interesting things started uh, to happen. A couple of months later, you have this game Fortnite and there was a concept being played from an artist called Travis Scott. And he had 12 million visitors on his concept, which is, of course, huge. And I saw this, but I didn't really directly connect the dots with uh, the metaverse, but I find it impressive. And then a couple of months later, you had Ariana Grande doing the same thing. And she got 74 million visitors in the virtual world, partying and enjoying those uh, concerts. And that was for me mind blowing. But again, still not really connected dots with uh, the metaverse. 
And then last year in uh, March, two really historical events had happened. Number one, a gaming company, which I knew because a lot of my little cousins are playing the game Roblox. They went public and they acquired a market capitalization of $42 billion. And they said in their year report, we, we don't want to be a gaming company, but the metaverse company. And secondly, what happened in uh, March was that an NFT was sold for the biggest amount in history. An artwork, a digital artwork was sold for 69 million. And yeah, this completely uh, blew my mind and it started to connect the dots for me. And I was like, okay, we have now blockchain, we have the ability to store digital assets and probably this is the, this is the real uh, ultimate internet end game. And, yeah, in my life, I have had a couple of, of a couple of occasions where I have become completely obsessed with something to the point of not even yeah, forgetting to eat and forgetting uh, to work out. The first time was when I was, I think, 10 years old. Uh, there was a game called RuneScape. I don't know the average age here in this uh, group, but perhaps people who are as old as me will know this uh, game. And I, so it's also kind of a virtual world. And I really spent uh, a lot of hours upgrading my avatar in those virtual world. And I think I also, because I'm from the Netherlands, I also derive most of my English from that game. The second time was when I was 17 years old. I wasn't never really a big reader or, or something, but I got this uh, book called The 4-Hour Work Week. And yeah, the title already appeared to me because who doesn't want to work uh, four hours a week? But since I read, read that kind of book, I was completely hooked. And I really saw the added value of reading uh, books instead of just following uh, school books. And the last time was when I was uh, start my job at Cisco. I didn't know anything about infrastructures, routers, cybersecurity. And then I found this out and I was really studying and it, yeah, trying to consume as much knowledge uh, today to, get, to acquire this knowledge. And yeah, with the metaverse, I have had completely uh, the same. And I think I haven't emerged from that yet because I keep finding new layers of depth uh, to the metaverse. So yeah, what is the metaverse actually? Because that's of course an important question here. Well, in 1996, uh, Bill Gates wrote an essay which is famous content uh, is king. And he said this quote, one of the exciting things about the internet is that anyone with a PC and a modem can publish whatever content they create for the internet to drive their content creators must be paid for their work for the long term prospects are good, but I expect a lot of disappointed in, in the short term. I do not know if he explicitly mentioned the metaverse, but it's coming uh, suspiciously close. So the metaverse is not a product, it's not a service, it's not a company. It's kind of a philosophy of the ultimate state as the internet was intended for, as Bill Gates is explaining here. It's also not just a virtual reality glass or a subscription you can sign up for. I think it's going to be an evolution of human, human connectivity and human communication. And virtual reality or augmented reality is bringing to life the unimagined and things that we are now seeing into games and integrating it into our virtual life. NFTs are a way, an invention to create digital scarcity and to store all these assets that we have in the metaverse in, a, in an immutable way. And blockchain is like the infrastructuralization that is facil facilitating everything underlying it. And it's completely different from everything, from all notions that we have seen uh, so far, because it's going to be completely borderless, completely global. When you are in Lithuania and I'm in the Netherlands, it doesn't matter. We are all interconnected. And it's completely, probably decentralized, which means that we are in control of our own data and we have our data sovereignty on that. So what this is going to be a world where you are going to socialize in, as in the real world, where you're going to transact in, where you're going to have built whole economies, where you can create your own stuff. And that's what you're seeing nowadays with 
artists they if you had been a good uh, 3d designer or you was an ar artist with painting you can now digitalize that and sell that as an nft in the open uh, world in the previous world th that wasn't possible because for three reasons you have highly manipulated algorithms by big tech so it's really difficult for example if we have this youtube channel today to come uh, on top of it secondly the digital marketplaces have super high uh, take rates, which makes it also hard. And thirdly, the current uh, big tech companies are completely centralized. So ultimately, if they want to delete you from their uh, platform, they can do. But in the metaverse, this is not uh, going to be possible. So what are a couple of uh, features of the metaverse? I have here shared with you six, but I will not uh, share them all uh, with you one by one. But persistence is a really important one. You have to think about the real world. The real world is always continuing. So is the metaverse. So if you as users are in the metaverse and you leave it and I enter in it again, it's still continuing. Secondly is synchronous. So what that means is that if I see you guys from a particular angle, you should see the same from your uh, perspective. So it's completely the same like in the, in, the, in the real world. And then thirdly, it's without any cap of users. So the ultimate goal is to have everyone integrated in those virtual worlds. And I think number five and six are really important. That's the ability to spend both the digital and the virtual. So if you're having a house or a car, you can store that also in the metaverse in some form of 3D object by an NFT, which represents value then. But which is also important, there are multiple metaverses or there are multiple virtual worlds. So you don't want to have like if nowadays that you have an object you have to trans you cannot transfer transfer it to a different world now you want to have that interoperable so then the the important question why are we what does this have to do with education well if i ask you a question now coming from university myself why are we going to education I think everyone in this room can give me numerous reasons as to why we are going to education, but can you explain it and define it in such a way that it's completely justified as to how we are following education in the fashion that we are doing today? Well, I give you four reasons why we are going uh, to education. First of all, the socialization uh, part is kind of nice to network have some uh, connections, but also soft skills in the interconnected world that we are living in are more important than ever. Although <laughs> programming skills are not also not a bad luxury because are, those are even in higher demand. Secondly, we are going to school because of our environment. Our parents want uh, the best for us, the government is dictating us to go to university or to go to school, our peers. So that's kind of how that emerges. And thirdly, it's a path of success. So we can acquire internships during our studies. We can get high grades. It's kind of a status as well. And yeah, looking back uh, and the degree ceremony and your parents attending that is probably one of the most beautiful things in life. But ironically, shit starts to hit the fan right after that day because where are you going to work and lastly of course uh, education to acquire knowledge develop some discipline develop some resilience in case you fail uh, your exam so how can the metaverse help and uh, improve education or revolutionize education for that, we need to understand uh, the challenges of the current education mechanisms first. If we are looking now at education, we haven't seen any major disruption since the uh, since centuries. If we are looking at other industries, there is even there are some disruptions. And of course, in education, we use tablets now. We have this online forum of getting educated, we have hybrid learning, we have blended learning, but education is still relatively similar as it was 100 years ago. It's still a lot of very dry, rot uh, learning, and it's derived and largely driven by the industrial model of knowledge recall and memorization. And this leads to a couple uh, 
of huge challenges in education. The first one is uh, a disconnect between learning and application. I think the labor market and the skills that are required in the labor market are massively outpacing the rate at which the universities uh, provide education. And that's why it's actually good that you're following these courses on Turing College, because those are in real time delivered by real experts and not from curriculums that were developed a couple of years ago. Well, why is this problematic? Well, according to an estimation of a research study on, of Deloitte, this will lead in the future to a jo job uh, gap of 2.4 million jobs, which is the equivalent in monetary terms of $2.5 trillion in costs. And this is are just moderate estimations. There are also estimations who think it's going to be costing $8.5 trillion. But yeah, of course, then you are going to say, or probably think by yourself, yeah, but those are just estimations, right? These, they, they are, these are not necessarily representations of reality. And I completely agree with that. But even if it's 20%, that means that we have a cost of 500 billion. So this is a massive uh, market opportunity to disrupt and to invent new ways of providing tailor and customized education. The second uh, element is time. We all know that time is a scarce resource, but if we are looking at universities, we, we actually come to the conclusion that time is extremely inefficiently uh, allocated. For example, if you have to follow a curriculum, you either have to start in August or in February, and if you are not on time, then you cannot even start in the next in the next uh, semester. But how nice would it be if we would just have some kind of fluid education where you can just flow in and flow, uh, flow out when you have acquired uh, the skill uh, set. And then thirdly, there is a massive shortage of staff worldwide. The demand for teachers is massively outpacing the supply of teachers. And what you are seeing also do with the pandemic that a lot of people are dropping out uh, out of their jobs because of post-pandemic uh, stress. And it does not only hurt the students, us, but also puts tremendous pressure on the teachers that are working uh, there. So then we have for the affordability. Why is that a problem? Well, if we are looking at the US, we are already seeing a student debt of $1.6 trillion uh, and the cost of education have increased 1400% since 1980 compared to an inflation of 236%. And the idea before was with a degree, you would have more chance on a job and yeah, better perspectives on the labor market. But nowadays, what you are seeing is that companies are also more open-minded to take on talents who just have acquired the skills. Elon Musk, for example, he said a degree does not even uh, matter. It could be a good signal that he's capable of great things, but it's not a guarantee and it's not, definitely not enough to take you on his team. But by all these points, I don't want to demonstrate that education is uh, completely useless. I just want to inspire you and show you that there are other ways necessary to have this uh, education because our education system is interconnected with everything. Our education system is interacted with our economy, with our law systems, with energy systems, with uh, transportation systems. And that's also confirmed by a lot of researchers. So if I ask you guys in this room, how many people are currently using augmented reality or virtual reality in education? Of course, we are having this uh, this virtual barrier between us, so I will not let unmute someone else, someone. But I think that would be very rare because we are still in our infancy, still in the very early days, and the tools to do this in education are still quite expensive. But what if I told you that instead of following a history course about Egypt and the pyramids, you could go to Egypt yourself and see how it was built, what the properties are, what the process was of being pyramids being built instead of having to reading a book on how it was built. What if I told you 
that you could see and chill with uh, Dr. Einstein to learn about his best practices to prepare for an exam and to acquire knowledge instead of reading his books and letting him talk to you back in the form of a hologram. Well, those things will be soon possible in the future, especially with uh, uh, AI and GTP3. There are massive possibilities to integrate avatars having as teachers in the virtual world. And that's also a massive opportunity for you guys, because those things have to be built on top of algorithms and some kind of uh, sort of uh, both. So these things are here yet already, but they don't have massive uh, adoption yet, but in the future they will have. What we are also seeing is the following. Now we are limited uh, by this screen. You see me perhaps having some gestures, uh, you see some nuances, but ultimately you cannot come closer to me in this room and you cannot see how I am moving. Well, if we are sitting in a classroom, for example, with our digital avatars, what does that provide us with? That will provide us with some sense of co-existence. Uh, and research shows that when you are emotionally and cognitively better aligned with each other, that men benefits us all in terms of productivity. And that's why it's completely normal that you are probably now already a bit, um, I'm not saying that you are bored by this story, but it's hard to concentrate everything continuously so because there is a lack of this interaction by the barriers that we are having well then we have one to many teaching which will which we will see increased in uh, the future of course there's a massive shortage of uh, of teachers and what you're seeing now probably you have, perhaps you have used this as well you have on youtube this channel uh, can academy which is providing stem uh, education like short clips to get yourself educated well this is interesting because this is called a phenomena this will lead to a phenomena called the death of geography and this means that you can get education by someone who is not necessarily in your own region how amazing would it be if we could follow education with a classmate from Dubai and a classmate from Sri Lanka and having a teacher from Norway? Well, those things will be possible in the metaverse because this is borderless and this is interoperable. And with avatars, those things will be possible. And if we are looking at this one, and perhaps um, here someone could uh, put the answer in the chat, who does know where this quote uh, comes from? Who made this quote? If I don't see any uh, messages pop up in the chat, I suppose the, the, the answer was a no. But does anyone know who, from who this quote is? <laughs> okay. Yes, this was uh, this was Benjamin. Uh, ben <laughs> Benjamin Fra Franklin. This is one of my favorite uh, quotes because it ties into this following uh, pyramid. And this pyramid, what is showing, it's uh, based on some research of education. It suggests that lecturing, what we are doing now, is one of the least effective ways to teach somebody uh, and absorb some uh, knowledge in, in comparison to practice by doing. And that's what's interesting because metaverse can take this to a whole other level, this practice by doing, because with your virtual reality headset or your augmented reality headset, you will participate in things instead of receiving knowledge. So that will also lead to better uh, knowledge retention and knowledge uh, retainment. So then what I've just uh, told you, the, this slide's about uh, learn to earn, and this is actually one of my favorite ones, and I think it has huge potential for the future. What we are currently seeing is the following. In the status quo, we are following an education for four years. We have to take on quite some large student debt, and then hopefully we'll find a job to pay our student debt back. That's quite a weird system, right? Because Ultimately, you are earning money for your employer, but you have to spend that money to yeah, resolve your student debt. What if I told you that you could study and earn uh, money simultaneously? Well, that's at the moment already uh, unfolding. Companies 
of building education uh, models and the idea is quite simple. You have an avatar or you have an account or like a personal character and you do you do these courses. So for example, if you're a data scientist and you have to do some, uh, develop some algorithms in uh, Python, that is like a pre-programmed course. And if you finish that, you are rewarded with tokens which have real value in the real world. So you could, for example, reward by uh, yeah, 0 0.02 Ethereum, and then you can swap that to euros. And the benefit of that is, of course, the monetary benefit. But it's also from a motivational effect, because how dismotivational is it to have to go to four years to school, take on massive student debt, and not being even guaranteed for a job? And secondly, what this leads to is having your performance stored on the blockchain, because the blockchain, what you need to know here, it's completely transparent and completely immutable. So whatever you do there will always be, you can always trace it back to the ledger. So for employers, it's easier to see if you completed this quest on the blockchain that you have completed and acquired a certain skill. I could perfectly have in the real world a master in data science, but perhaps I suck at data science. And this is completely eliminated with, um, yeah, with this new model. And this will lead to something that's called proof of uh, skill. And ultimately, scholarships can also be introduced uh, to blockchain because you can have you can develop a token and then you can bottom up design a way where you say okay i am going to obtain these data science skills in four months this is my experience who wants to fund me and then they can put that in a in a wallet and ultimately if you want that they can you can design a smart contract where they will get a percentage of the revenue that you will find when you have a real job because not everybody has the opportunity to pay uh, for school so then just a couple uh, of jobs that will be emerging from uh, the metaverse i will briefly walk uh, through them i've talked about ar and uh, vr so software engineers will be in massive uh, demand and you see the programming language displayed here Secondly, there is a lot of game uh, designers being searched at the moment. So if you have some of these skills, you don't have to worry uh, at all. But also storytelling, because Metaverse, I'm not saying it is a game, but it, it, it has a lot of gaming elements in it. And the people have to design the stories that you're seeing and unfolding in uh, the Metaverse. And then, um, yeah, the last three things that you are seeing is hardware engineers, for example, to do, to have those virtual reality glasses or augmented reality glasses, metaverse marketers, and it's also tying into data science, which I which I will talk for in the last couple of minutes. And then, um, yeah, people who are investing in uh, virtual real estate, people who are building games, people who are earning money with those games. So. How does data science, what does this mean for you guys, uh, data, data scientists? We do not know yet what the metaverse will look like in the future and what it will hold for us. But I can guarantee you, and one thing is 100% certain, that there will be an enormous amount of data generated in the future as a result of those virtual worlds. And perhaps it hasn't got enough, enough attention. Um, it hasn't got enough attention yet, but all those experience in the metaverse will need to be monitored and you want to get you want to be tracking those experiences so if you want to bring the real world into the virtual world what you will ultimately need is some kind of machine learning some kind of bot or automation to replace those human processes in the virtual uh, world and the more flexible the algorithms the more versatile the experience will be and the more versatile the experience will be the better uh, metaverse you can provide as a company or as an individual because how boring is it if i'm going in the metaverse and i have continuously repetitively the same experiences and you guys can do a tremendous job at de developing more variation in these uh, metaverses so if you want to bring the real world into the virtual world, what you have to do, you also have to duplicate the human element into the virtual world. 
But going online brings the problem of massive scaling and humans don't scale very well. So you guys, perhaps in the future, can develop some algorithms, some machine learning to handle all of this. So what we have been seeing um, to close off with, in, 90, in 1969, the internet was invented. In 1989, the World Wide Web got launched. In 2009, blockchain got uh, launched. Now we are in 2021, and maybe we are already in some kind of simulation or a metaverse. But one thing uh, is for sure, it will be bigger than something we have ever seen so far. It will be very hard uh, to understand that requires continuous observation and study. But it definitely has the possibility to become an immersive, creative, and one of the most imaginative virtual environments that we will see in the future. And it has the possibility to ultimately change our lives and uh, your roles as uh, data scientists. So that was my presentation. So I am open to uh, receive any uh, questions. Thank you, Samir, for your for your presentation. It was really interesting to hear and. You know, from the one side, it was very practical and at the same time was very fresh and new perspective to the education. And now I would like to share some questions with you and I hope that you will be able to answer it. So the first question or maybe the statement with, you, with it, you can agree or not, but I think uh, so I would like to hear your opinion. Uh, yeah. Would you agree with the statement that the metaverse can help students and teachers adapt to the post-pandemic world in the best way? I absolutely, I completely uh, agree with that because it's kind of disconnection or kind of alienating that we are talking now in a way we can interact behind the screen screen but i cannot sense your what i said in my presentation your gestures how you are emotionally feeling i think the problems we have today like climate change uh, problems that company are solving are interdisciplinary problems so if you are a data scientist you will have to collaborate with some kind of other specialist and it's very exhausting to study behind the screen and have this they talk about hybrid education but it's still very limited and if we are in the metaverse as an avatar and we have some sense of three, dim three uh, di dimensionality that will definitely i'm very positive that it will increase our uh, yeah our ability to be emotionally uh, connected and be less tired and more excited about uh, yeah your creative environment and give you more energy so i definitely do agree with them Okay, thank you for your answer. And you mentioned the data scientists, the, the people who will join the metaverse. Uh, but question is about the current situation. Do you think that today's education community, so that means all the uh, teachers and etc., is enough is enough digital literacy? Uh Perhaps some clarification to that question. So would that mean like the the teachers that, that they already possess enough digital uh, literacy or education as a whole or yeah, education as a whole because... education as a whole yeah maybe from this side yeah that's a, that's a really uh, good question because on the one hand it could sound in my presentation that I'm kind of uh, challenging education like come on you're so uh, outdated but I don't think it's fair to uh, to claim that uh, entirely because there is already what you are doing for example you are already quite digitalized but at the same time um, the world develops so fast so it's automatically after three months you're already kind of behind so i think every education and that is something that could be enhanced should continuously perhaps they should hire someone who is continuously analyzing okay what's going on in the field in the world of technology and how can we integrate that into our education and which pieces can we use so you are not after a year like okay we have now the 
utilize uh, form of education. Other education institutions in Australia are already having avatar education in the metaverse. I think you want to be as early in as possible, want to understand it, and secondly, to reap the benefits uh, of it, because uh, yeah, the education institutions that will jump in first will have a huge uh, first mover advantage. So yeah, good, great question. I, uh, I agree with it, yeah. Uh, thank you, Samira. And I see that Ben has posted question in our uh, Zoom chat, and mm -hmm. he is referring to the one article um, I didn't open yet. And yeah, of course, we need time to read it. But he, his question sounds like this. Hasn't Multiverse been around 1978 as multi-user dungeon? Uh, in fact, I need to even Google it. What is the multi-user dungeon? Maybe you are familiar with this term and uh, you will be able to answer it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, those things have been uh, have been around already pretty early. So uh, who said that in the chat? Yeah, being as you're, you are completely uh, accurate, but the sophistication and the technologies of doing this in a way that is in a virtual reality world and not behind the 2D screen from your desk and having the ability to be an owner of your virtual mobile in the metaverse. Those possibilities didn't exist in those um, uh, multi-massive online multiplayer uh, games because they could delete your account with one uh, push at the button. In the metaverse, when it's decentralized, you are the owner of your assets. You are experiencing everything in a virtual kind of sort of way. And in the old games, yeah, those possibilities were incredibly limited uh, compared uh, to now. And we are still not there. We are still having, uh, we have to make some progress with bandwidth, with uh, hardware, with technology, but we are seeing that we are coming closer and closer. And that's why it's, getting more media attention and also why Facebook, for example, uh, rebranded themselves to uh, Meta. Okay, thank you, Samir. Thank you for your answer. Thank you for your really interesting and uh, futuristic uh, presentation. And today we are not meet meeting physically, but maybe someday we will meet somewhere on Metaverse. So thank you for your presentation nice. once again. And thank you for being you're, with us. Yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome. I hope uh, you guys have a great uh, one on the hackathon. Feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions about the message because I completely understand that time is limited. And it was a pleasure to just share my uh, perspective from my experience uh, about the metaverse. And um, yeah, please invite me uh, in a couple of months again because probably what I've spoken about will be outdated then already because the space moves so fast. Yeah, sometimes the world is uh, changing so fastly, sometimes in not so good, uh, not, not so good direction, but I'm happy that today we are talking about very positive things and it will, it, uh, it is giving us very uh, optimistic future view. So thank you once again, Samir, and for the rest of the participants, let's move to the hackathon part. Thank you.